Welcome back to the Bleeding Truth, everybody. Thanks a million for being here today. Look, at, I'm in the same room as my friend Jackie Lagana. Jackie is a nurse midwife and she is a reproductive um, care, care, care specialist. Care specialist. Yeah. Okay. Yes, exactly. And uh, she's excellent. I, I'm so lucky I get to work with her once a month. <laughs> and that once a month, I always have my notebook out because she teaches so much oh, that's so sweet. it's true that's so it's sweet. true everyone around her we're all like take notes what she <laughs> say? she teaches us so much and um when she comes to work with us in our clinic um she brings a wealth of information not just with, for ob patients but mostly for gynae patients and um today mm -hmm. she's going to share some information with us on sexually transmitted diseases. Yes, which now the new term is sexually transmitted infection. Infection. Well, that's kind of what we're going with yes, today. Right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. um, and great and, to meet you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wonderful yeah. things. <laughs> we, met, we met in the past a couple of years ago at St. Patrick's. Okay. So well, of course, then that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. worries. Yeah, of course. So tell us a little yeah. bit about yourself first. Okay. Well, let's see. Um, I'll give you the the quick version. Mm -hmm. You want that? The quick version. <laughs> okay. So um, originally, before I was a women's health nurse practitioner and certified nurse midwife, um, I actually was a graphic designer, mm -hmm. and then I quit that. I quit that career, mm -hmm. and then I went into wilderness therapy for a bunch of years, and I was also a river guide. I can totally and, see that. <laughs> worked yeah. at a ski resort, and yeah. then went back into the nursing field, and yeah. then kind of went into the woman's health pathway. Mm -hmm. And then, um, um, like Sally does, I deliver babies for about six or seven years mm -hmm. and um, was in women's health care, I would say now about 15 years mm -hmm. total. Wow, yeah. it's 15 years. Yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at. And now I work in, um, I work with Sally once a month at the OB clinic. Mm -hmm. And then I also work at a reproductive care clinic. And we do a lot of services. I would say we do probably about 80 to 90% women's health, 10% uh, men's mm -hmm. uh, yeah. men issues. And then we do also uh, gender transition care as well. And that might be about so like 5%. Fabulous. Yeah. 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 So we do love it. Yeah, we do. Great. Oh, you're yeah. so good. Um, well, I would love to talk to you about uh, all of that uh, someday. That sounds like a, another podcast. Uh, today, though, tell us a little bit about yeah. um, the STDs that, yeah. you, say, that oh. you would see most often at your clinic. I mean, perfect. we see them at our clinic. Yeah, perfect. But you probably get more at we, your clinic. We do. We do. We see the gamut, right? Mm -hmm. Um so just in a nutshell, right? Like when we're talking about STDs, which ones are we talking about? Um, I would say the most common one out there is chlamydia. It's about three times more prevalent than yeah. gonorrhea. Yeah. So we test for those most often. Uh, I would say next tier down would be trichomonas. And then we have syphilis, which is apparently making a comeback. Oh, yeah. So I didn't, yeah, you know, we thought it was going away. It's certainly not. It's coming, coming right back. back. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> HIV is still present. Um, mm -hmm. Interestingly, there in the way that I grew up with it mm -hmm. and the way you grew up with it, yeah. right? Where it was probably life ending. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, most people don't really look at that in the same way right. when they get the diagnosis of mm -hmm. HIV positive. So that's been There's some great medicine. Yeah. Great, so yeah. yeah, it's just sort yeah. of a condition they have and they live with. Actually I haven't seen a positive patient yeah. in years. Okay. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Yeah. I just had two this past week. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then um also herpes, yeah. right? The one that never yeah. really goes away. Mm -hmm. um, molluscum, which really sort of isn't classified as a sexually transmitted infection, but right. appears in the genital areas as an adult, but you can get it as a child. Okay. So that's yeah. an interesting one. Yeah. And then we also have, um, you know, monkeypox has kind of been on the scene for the male to male population. Yes. So that kind of runs down, I would say, most mm -hmm. maybe of yeah. everything. And HPV then. Oh, of HPV, of course. Yeah. Congratulations, we all have it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Sorry to break the news. We all have it. So, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we do. It's unfortunate. Um, so <laughs> that's like a whole nother podcast, yeah. but we could definitely put that in. Um, what do you, you know, yeah, that would be, because I'm not familiar too much with what even is HPV, so. Yeah, I would yeah. say that most people aren't. 
Um, yeah. In fact, when people come in for a pap test, they actually don't know why they get it, but mm -hmm. they just know they need to get it. Right. And it's actually for the presence of HPV, especially mm -hmm. the high risk. Okay. And then it's also, um, you know, again, when you're doing the pap test, we're looking for cervical cancer, which, you know, hopefully is less and less as we're all vaccinated, you know, right. or the prevalence. Right. Um, the other thing we I didn't mention, but is genital, genital warts, and that really is in the HPV. Family. Oh, wow. And yeah. so that's one of the other STIs out there yeah. as well. So there's a whole gamut of stuff. Oh, um, fun things we have to talk about. <laughs> one of the interesting trends I will, um, I've been thinking about this because it sort of popped up on my radar a couple of years in a row. Um, so I'll just, wherever you want to, you know, yeah. you never really want to go with this, but because of the COVID, you know, at the beginning of COVID mm -hmm. and then now sort of after COVID, you know, our immune systems are down quite a bit, I would say, okay. right? Like virologists talk about okay. when you wear a mask yeah. for, for oh, years, right. we're not really sharing yes. bacteria anymore. We yes. don't we do not do this. We don't hug. We don't, you know, grab each other's yes. hands. Mm -hmm. We don't breathe each other's. Yeah. We know? don't kiss each other. <laughs> None of that. <laughs> and hellos. <laughs> so we don't really share in that anymore. And so we don't really mm -hmm. come across all the viruses and bacteria That's a really good so our, point. our immune yeah. systems go down right. so one thing i noticed right when the the covid everyone went on shutdown march of what 2020 yeah mm -hmm. our clinic just ramped up we just opened up our doors when all the other clinics closed mm. yeah, come on in. <laughs> come yeah. on. oh yes and yeah. what they found which was unbelievable was um there was a herpes like a herpes mini i would say oh, epidemic oh, going yeah. around in the background yeah. uh -huh. so I would say that, and here's what's really interesting, mm -hmm. is one of the symptoms, you know, obviously we can't, most people can't bend in that fashion to see mm -hmm. their area down below, right? Yeah. If you could, you would be a contortionist, <laughs> but um, most people can't see that area. So a lot of women were coming in saying, I think I have a UTI. It burns oh, with yeah. when I urinate, um, you know, it's just uncomfortable, but you know, when I urinate, it's just really present, it's really bothersome. And, you know, nowadays in healthcare, if you go in and say you have a UTI, I mean, Bridge, can you speak to this? How often had you had to undress for your visit or what, what would well, your visit? Thankfully for a UTI, I, I've never gone in for that reason. Okay. Uh, I always um, had Sally and Sally just helped me. <laughs> so Most women, I would say, I, you know, yeah. you had to be, yeah. Sally, like when, when your patients come, do you have them undress if they have a UTI? I don't do it. Okay. No, All right. No. This is a good place to talk about that. Right. So what's, yeah. what do they usually do when they come in? Well, we get a specimen of urine. Yeah. We see if they've got back pain. Yeah. And we talk to them about their symptoms. Yeah. Yeah. And then if their dip is positive, right, yeah. you treat yeah. them, right? Or right. if it's questionable, you send out the culture, mm -hmm. you treat out the culture, right? Yeah. What I was noticing is that a lot of times two things were getting most, most specifically either herpes outbreak and they were thinking it was a urinary tract yeah. infection. And it actually, the outbreak would clear up by the time you finished your medication, which would be right. interesting. Um, yeah. Or the other thing that was showing up um, was uh, actually, you know, a lot of women will say, oh, I can't have that antibiotic if I have it when you get a yeast infection. Right. Actually, women will already have a yeast infection. And the yeast will sort of, um, it loves to live in a warm, warm place to grow and like do its yes. thing and party and yeah. like, you know, spawn and I don't know, do whatever it does. And then it kind of hangs out, you know, from inside and it works its way out. And usually you're so uncomfortable that mm -hmm. the urethra wants to evacuate it. And so you'll pee more often. And so a lot of them will say, I think I have a UTI okay. when actually they have a severe yeast infection. Mm -hmm. And that will actually show up on the urine dip in the office as you know, white blood cells mm -hmm. in blood, and then people will treat it. And then after they'll go, oh my gosh, I have this crazy yeast infection. Yeah. And you're kind of thinking, you know what, maybe you have, have it's probably, it was that. And maybe so not that's UTI. interesting. I'm women coming in with UTI, I said, we should check down there and make sure that it's not. It's something. actually a good idea. Yeah, yeah right. it's a great idea. Yeah. I would even tell if you're listening, <laughs> whoever's listening, request it. Yeah. Just I'm happy to like get a little visual yeah. down below. Right. Okay. It's, you know, it's amazing what you, I didn't, you know, it's such a small area. I can't believe what happens mm -hmm. down there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's amazing. I know. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> when you get in such, an, such an expansive area. So interesting. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I don't know if that gives you a little. But that is interesting. After COVID, yeah. 
yeah. things change. Like, yeah, right. Like, rate of deliveries dropped quite a bit, yes. but now we're so busy. Right, you're so busy. Oh my God. <laughs> Nine right. deliveries in oh the last four days. Oh my gosh, look at you. Yeah. Yeah. Exhausted. Still my delivery going. arm. Still going. I'm training this arm. Good. 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 Wow. Y'all wanted to meet Sally. <laughs> They're like, I'm on the bus. Wait, you're going? I'm getting on the bus too. I want to meet her. Okay. Bus. <laughs> what was what was nine months ago? Well, everyone felt freer, I think, after that. I guess. Well, and what was there a holiday? Summer. Yeah. Was there, oh, that was Valentine's Day. Was that was Valentine's Day? No, I think it was more like. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was spring break. <laughs> Spring break. Spring break. <laughs> spring break. Well, you know. Yeah, a bunch of spring babies. There you go. Um, but then I did notice yeah. another, I would say, round yeah. of herpes again in the right. past month. And everyone's yeah. been sick with the flu and oh, RSV and strep true. and COVID again. And yes. everything has really sort of just wow. dampened the immune system. Yes. And it's made it really inviting for um, Well, perhaps herpes. they're catching the flu mm -hmm. or COVID or something, but yes. they're... And so their immune system is weakened and they already were infected with their case. They could always they could have and, that too. And and yeah. when your immune system yeah. is reduced for some reason, stress or illness, yeah. her face yeah. is like, Yay, I'm yeah, gonna come out a, and make a little and appearance. Yeah, there's yeah. a there's a bunch of different like versions of it too, right? I know there's just like the mouth like sore yeah. ones and then I don't even really know the extent. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Otherwise, here's a good rule of thumb. If you have a sore anywhere, no sexual contact. So if mm -hmm. your partner has yeah. a sore on the mouth mm -hmm. um, or inside, but definitely around the mouth, actually, there should be no cross like to oral activity whatsoever. That's how it actually gets crossed over. Right. Wow. Yeah, which is interesting. really interesting. Yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, so an HSV-1, which HSV1. we call the oral one. Yes, and HSV-2 is usually, mostly the genital. So that can become HSV-2, is that what you're saying? Um, HSV-1 can cross down to HS where the genital area is. So you can have HSV-1 yes. down yeah. there, but yeah. then oh, there's wow. another one called HSV-2, yes. which, which is more serious and can be more painful. Yeah. But both are painful. Both are painful, yeah. yes. Yeah, but, you know, viruses yeah. like to live anywhere is yeah. really the rule of thumb. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it's a good thing to, yeah. to know. Because I think in about 80 or 90% of the population carries herpes in their mouth. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. that's, we just, people don't know. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. you don't have to have to have an active lesion yeah. in order to pass, like, it on or... pass it along or be contagious to another person. Yeah. Um, right. Even symptoms right beforehand, like some people will get tingling or itching mm -hmm. or something where they yeah. know like a cold sore, they're going to break out. Yeah. That's what actually when it's like really high contagion period, mm -hmm. kind of like when someone has so a interesting. Right before yeah. they get sick. Right. Yeah. So what age? Herpes. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead. What's the treatment? Well, uh, you'd want to get on an antiviral. So yeah. you could do either a cyclovir or valcyclovir. So those are two of the ones that are out. You would do like a loading dose. And then you would basically, for your first outbreak, take it for a longer course, maybe 10 days. And then for after that, you get to decide if you want to do it for breakouts or yeah. just do like a suppression daily treatment. And I usually tell people it's not an antibiotic, it's an antiviral. So it's really there to help your immune system respond and work. Yeah. And for our pregnant women who get herpes, if um, if we know that they're positive, we put them on suppression therapy for 36 weeks of their pregnancy. Yeah. And that can kind of help to prevent an outbreak. What we worry about is that they might have an outbreak around the time that they're delivering their baby. And then, of course, the baby can catch it. If the baby comes through a vagina, right. it might be a little sore. Um, so it's it can be very serious for the baby. The baby can get really sick. Um, mm -hmm. So um, if she did have an outbreak around the time she went into labor or a few days before, we would do a cesarean section mm -hmm. to prevent that mm -hmm. infection. Mm -hmm. So that's very interesting. Do. Yeah. And that's because when I get them and I diagnose them, yeah, I may. I tell them. I said, make yeah. sure you tell your OB down yeah, the road right. or your yeah. provider uh, when you're yeah. pregnant because they really need to know about it. Yeah. There's, there's this an 
interesting trend nowadays where you yeah. ask people like, you know, what are your medical conditions? And, and then there's some things that are just sort of, I think, mm-hmm. maybe they don't always say, right. you know, anxiety yeah. or depression. And then like, yeah. they don't realize they've been on a cyclovir for four years. So they don't think to mention like, right. oh, so that I have this. So yeah. it's just important mm-hmm. to kind of remember that. Right. Yeah, everything is important to tell your provider. Yeah, yeah. super. Um, yeah. Do you have any questions, Betty? Yeah, I mean, I was wondering, because um, you said some of the most common ones were like chlamydia and such. What like age ranges are you seeing that in the most? I I just have like one major memory of, of like seeing it happen, go through my college at the time. Thankfully, I did not get that. But it did happen where it was just like people were, you know, the swim team and then the soccer team. And it just kind of like spread like crazy. Who's that guy running around campus, <laughs> giving it? right? It, it was, I mean, it's college, so <laughs> it was a small school. You'd hear about it. But like, that's what I think every time I hear about it, I think about <laughs> that like month of college <laughs> where everybody knew yeah. um, that it was, you know, a risk, of course. Yeah. Um, but is that like the typical age range that you're seeing, or is it? I would say that's probably the most typical age range, Mm -hmm. Um, though I would say, um, I think because because maybe like the the sexual activity is a bit higher, right? And um, and kind of correlates to a lot of people at once in a sort of a fast timeline, right? (laughs) Um, Military bases, that's also kind of, that's another arena, Um, you know, and- High schoolers. Yeah, high schoolers, you know. it's interesting because it really is not age. Um, like it's a, like, it doesn't have a, an affinity for any age, yeah. but it really can show um, itself almost anywhere. It just depends on the populations where there's a high sexual right. activity yeah. happening. And then a, like a lot of cross correlating. Yes. So it may be like right. cross partnering. Yeah. Is that the way I would say that? <laughs> I like that. Other That's partners. <laughs> what would a person look for if they suspected they had chlamydia? Oh, good question. You know, if it's a new infection, um, and here's the thing, it's, you know, chlamydia is treatable. So that's really most important to tell people, right? Um, uh, funny enough, people will come in mm-hmm. saying they have a UTI. <laughs> and, oh, <laughs> yeah. And here's, that's so true. Here's, yep, you, you had a yes. yes. Yeah. The other telltale is if they have a UTI, but they say, I also have vaginal discharge. Mm-hmm. Those two together, I'm usually on high alert. Yeah. High alert. I will be like, we have to swab you. And literally probably 20% of the time to 30% of the time will come back positive chlamydia. Interesting. And it's not yeah. a UTI. It's mm-hmm. actually the chlamydia infection itself. So you're really looking at a timeline. I would say that when it's a new infection, yeah. um, so chlamydia is when you're exposed to it, the first to detect it is actually seven days in from exposure from a partner. Um, and then it's most accurate two weeks out from exposure. So people who come in and they're like, oh my gosh, I had a new partner yesterday. I'm really worried. I need testing. And we're like, we can give you a baseline today, but it's actually not going to pick it up in yeah. your body. That's in interesting. One yeah. One to two weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas gonorrhea, we can yeah. pick up in two days and it's most accurate at seven days. Yeah. So that's yeah. kind of interesting. Um, but I would say that 80% of people, new infection, don't have any symptoms. I mean, the, the vaginal environment really is called the vaginal vault for a reason. It's a vault because it likes to hide stuff in there. <laughs> symptoms is one of them. People don't have symptoms right away. They right. just don't. Yeah. Um, yeah. Only is when that infection has been around for a bit or their immune system is down or their pH level in their vaginal environment is off. And it gives a reason for that infection to take hold, right? And sort of show a little bit front yeah. forward. Yeah. But otherwise, it really just, you know, testing is the best way. So I always tell people, you know, even if you haven't had a new partner in a while, you know, I would just recommend baseline testing. It's not a bad idea. Of course, it's a lot yeah. easier to treat uh, than something like hair face. Very yeah. easy to treat. I, I'm going to, this might be a little bit off the, off the cuff in so yeah. many ways, but at uh, in order to teach my medical assistants at work or the ones that I work with, we'll play Would You Rather. And we played a game of Would You Rather Have, um, you know, syphilis or herpes. Yeah. And surprisingly, you know, a lot of people are like, I would have herpes. And I'm like, I don't know about that. I'd rather have syphilis. You know, yeah, like, you, you can treat syphilis. It that. just sounds worse. <laughs> <laughs> the word. No, I, I, 
I got it early. Yeah, right. Right, you have early syphilis, right? Let's add that into the team. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, chlamydia itself is really kind of like wolf in sheep's clothing. You're not really going to see it right away. Um, but it will come up as masked as other things, your UTI, your vaginal discharge. Um, you know, one of the things I'll notice on exam, like, you know, I'll do a swab. If it's a new infection, I can't really see, right? Um, but when it's been around for a while, it will be like mm -hmm. a kind of a yellow, maybe right. kind of a thick mm -hmm. yellow. Yes. They call it mucoid, you know, discharge. Yeah. So at that point, you know, usually there's alert bells of other things right. going on. What is the treatment? The treatment, it used to be azithromycin, which yeah. we still treat, you know, yeah. pregnant women mm -hmm. with azithromycin. Um, but now it is doxycycline. So in the last year or two, the CDC recommends doxycycline, right. uh, you know, as its course of treatment, a seven-day course. Oh, Just we're treating it. Yeah. One dose. I know. Yeah. It's become resistant. Yeah. As oh, all wow. Yeah, they like to become resistant. Yeah. They like to live more. <laughs> than we, I don't know. They, yeah, they're stronger at living and find, yeah. adapting to their Not surprised. But it's one of the ones that it's really important to treat it, yeah. not to just ignore it, because yeah. it can find its way up to the fallopian tubes, yes. right? And yeah. so infertility. Yeah. 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 That's, so that's yeah. What the, yeah, it can cause a risk of, we actually had a patient who had like, abscesses in their ovaries oh, after a surgical oh. procedure because they did have chlamydia and they declined testing mm -hmm. and then when when there was an invasive procedure yeah. with surgical tools that infection just found the pathway right up to the ovaries mm -hmm. so they ended up in the hospital wow. um so it always i always tell people like if we're going to put anything mm -hmm. up inside your uterus like yeah. please let us do some like baseline testing for you it really is important but so, mm -hmm. chlamydia and gonorrhea are really high on the list for if it's been there for a long time and yeah. um, they're at risk for what's called pelvic inflammatory disease which basically just means an infection that's gone from down below in the vaginal ball up into the uterus and the ovaries and has caused really uh, a lot of pain discomfort um, usually people will talk about abdominal pain um, one-sided you know kind of oh you know I think I have an ovarian cyst type feeling of pain and then a fever and that's usually when it's it's time to get them into the hospital so that's really far down the road yeah yeah great what what other um so the chlamydia and gonorrhea those are the two that are very serious in that sense are there more or they're yeah. the most common yeah. yeah but gonorrhea is a little different isn't it it's is a little different yeah yeah you go for it well you know no, no. <laughs> you're right i mean all i know is gonorrhea okay. is sometimes yeah. smelly it's got a mm. certain odor that yeah. yeah, well, trick does too. Trick yeah. and, trick and has a smell too. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, I you know, that's sort of once your pH level goes off, then 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 that uh -huh. that's a whole nother. Yeah, the pH yeah. level sort of kind of makes everything off, right? Yeah. Um, and that should be like a telltale sign. Like women are one of the new trends out there is go to the store and buy a vaginal wash and like, I mean, I'm seeing. I don't know about you, mm -hmm. but I'm seeing like, um, what do you know? And like, have you seen oh, yeah. them? Oh, yeah. Lume. 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 Yeah, yeah, right. Lume. And then like vaginal washes yeah. and douches. I'm not kidding. Like, I have not heard of this. But I don't know. <laughs> but all I do want to make a note of is like, <laughs> I'm trying to tell you something. Yeah. You know, when things are showing up, it's telling you something. It's like a late symptom to something that's been going on in the body and so no. i always tell people like you know and then you know when i'm well, i could say it yes yeah, so i guess i say it once a day at work at least <laughs> which is if you wouldn't put it in your mouth it doesn't belong in your vagina <laughs> so we'll just let you think about that one for a little bit <laughs> but i guess i need to say like if you're gonna like if you go to the store and you're looking at the shelf and you see a vaginal douche and you're like this right. looks fantastic. Like yeah. this is gonna make my vagina smell like amazing, yeah. like roses, right. and yes. invite all anyone in that wants to be there. It'll be like a fragrant garden. <laughs> I don't know, but you know, at the end of the day, when you read it and you can't pronounce the chemicals, yeah. um, and if you're thinking I wouldn't put that in my mouth because it's the same membranes as inside mm -hmm. your vagina, the reality is it doesn't belong in your vagina. So 
Because it can upset the pH and yeah. all sorts of things right. can all take over them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bad things can happen. That's <laughs> Quality <laughs> advice. Yeah. What about a vinegar douche? That oh. used to be a, a very you know, popular old way to. You know what is that? it? Vinegar what? Vinegar vinegar, vinegar douches. Douche. So like a vinegar vaginal wash. A BBW. Yes, a BBW. <laughs> <laughs> That's what called um, so actually, I still do talk about this. So uh, the a BBW. <laughs> Vinegar vaginal wash for all you listening. Um, or um, the other thing is a baking soda wash, right? Yeah. So um, I'm going to get a little bit nerdy here for about 20 seconds. Good. And if Love I get that. too nerdy, just take me out, bring me back. No, me. you're good. The vaginal pH likes to be really a tight window. It likes to be between 3.8 to 4.2. That's not even a full number. We're talking at the end of three and at the beginning of four. We have four little decimal tenths of a spot that your vaginal pH loves to be in. So let's make that called 82 degrees in Hawaii. Your vagina likes to be 82 degrees like Hawaii every day. It doesn't like to be 86 degrees. It doesn't like to be 78 degrees. If there's an offender that comes in or a tsunami that's going to disrupt that environment, it's really once your pH level is off, you're making it really prone for um, other things to come in. And we can talk about HPV down the road about this because the new research coming out with rectal cancer in HPV and pH and microbiome it is like so unbelievably oh, yeah. shocking that like people need to know about it. So yes. we'll, we'll talk about that um, right. another time. But so what happens is, is when people are prone to, let's say, They'll, they'll come to the office and they say, you know, I've noticed I have like a smell down there, an odor. It's pretty offensive. I'm really sensitive about it. It's a little bit fishy. That tells me their pH level has gone all the way over to over 4.2. They're probably sitting somewhere of 4.5 to maybe 5 or 5.5. Yeah. So that's when we'll, I'll usually say that the vinegar wash might be a great thing. So I usually tell them to get like... Um, that, you know, one of those squeezy bottles that yeah. hold about eight ounces, put in warm water, maybe put in about a half a teaspoon of vinegar, more is not better. So mm -hmm. half a teaspoon, and then they would insert it vaginally, like while they're standing in the shower, because when you're sitting, your vaginal canal is, you know, it's only going to go, we're down like the bottom half, and it won't get back into everywhere. So if you're in the shower, it's a little more straight. Um, so I'll tell them to do it at night for about seven nights, and then they can do it weekly or after intercourse or wherever they find that there's like something coming in, right? So it's really treating the symptom, but it can bring that pH level back to a little more acidic. If they're a little bit too acidic, right? So if they're sitting like, instead of 3.8, they're sitting lower than that, so around three, and yeast loves to live there, but also cytolytic vaginosis loves to live there. And it, it's kind of a yeast mimicker. So like people will say, I have yeast infections all the time. Yeah. They really don't. They actually have cytolytic vaginosis. Um, and those both love to live there. So one of the treatments for that would be do the same, fill that plastic squeezy bottle with eight ounces of water, warm water, and then put in one teaspoon of organic uh, baking soda. And then you could do that for seven nights. If your symptoms don't go away, then it might be yeast. It might not be mm -hmm. cytolytic vaginosis, but... When I say these fancy terms, it's all pH imbalances. So when so I talk no. about yeah. cytolytic vaginosis yeah. and bacterial vaginosis, which out in the world is BV, those are pH imbalances. That's exactly what they are. They're not a uh, bacterial infection. Mm. That's a really good discussion. That's so interesting. And such a lovely, natural way right. to treat yes, it is. Isn't that right. great? Very affordable. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Very, very and again, yeah. you're going to put vinegar in your mouth. You're going to put baking yeah. soda in your mouth. So it's yeah. okay to put them in your vagina. Right. Right. right exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Excuse me while I just take a drink. Okay. Okay. <laughs> vinegar. Your apple cider vinegar. Water drink. Right? I tried vinegar. that the other night. I tried. <laughs> it was, it was yeah. rough. Wow. That's a rough <laughs> drink. Yeah. What else was in it? Just water apple and cider. apple cider vinegar. That is that is a rough way to go. Yeah. It's, it's better if you just do it like straight. Shot. Yeah, do a shot and then you're done. Yeah. And it's good to drink it wine. Just a little bit of apple cider vinegar. I've just heard mm -hmm. it's good for you. I hadn't I don't do that normally, but I wanted to try yeah. it. I thought it wouldn't be as as terrible. Well, you to us, let us know what's happening. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> Keep us updated. Yeah. Yeah. Water wanted... was rough. <laughs> I didn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, that was yeah. so interesting. I love that. Thank you so much for oh, that. Of course. Yeah, of I'm course. sure that's going to help a lot of people. Anyone who's listening. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, you could try it at home. You really can't mm-hmm. go wrong. I mean, and then if it doesn't work, then you know something else is hanging around in the background. So it's always good to get checked out. So bacterial vaginosis. Yes. Uh, some women are worried when I call them and I say, yes. your pap shows yes. ED, bacterial yes. vaginosis. Yes. And they're like, oh no, does that mean that, you know, he was unfaithful? Right. Did he bring right. me something? Right. So tell right. us about that. Yeah. Um, it really is exactly, um, oh gosh, okay, I can get nerdy again. Do you want me to keep it? <laughs> yeah, yeah nerdy. Nerdy. get nerdy. <laughs> So again, we're we're not 82 degrees in Hawaii now. We're about 86, mm. and <laughs> your body says, "Hey, you know what? Alert, alert, alert! <laughs> the tsunami came in, <laughs> and it's like 86 degrees. There's a hot, a hot wave, heat wave, and I'm gonna send out like all the rainstorm clouds to like break this hot, this heat wave. But instead of sending out one or two clouds, it sends out like a thousand clouds to come in, like so now you're in like you know with you know the worst rainstorm kind of like a hurricane okay. at this point you're in a hurricane <laughs> she speaks blue in yeah. the vagina yeah there you go <laughs> right exactly so so at that point the the nerdy term is you know everyone's like oh my gosh i'm taking my probiotics so your helpful bacteria is called lactobacillus right and we think there's only one lactobacillus species, uh-huh. species but there's yeah. actually about like 45 on there. But that's like a whole nother. Yeah. So what yeah. happens is one of them comes out very predominantly and sends out like your body will send out like 100,000 of them instead of 1,000. And at that point, that's when that women know that like discharge, that's like maybe they're like, oh, it's kind of gray or it could be thin or watery or like slightly yellow. Um, it's. And then they'll notice that fishy odor. And that's usually one of the first two common things they'll notice with BV or bacterial vaginosis. And then they'll get really worried because they hear bacterial in the name. And really it is just your own body sending out the good bacteria. Like overcompensating almost. Overcompensating, yeah. exactly. Overachiever. <laughs> Look at your body's overachiever. <laughs> and then, yeah, you end up in just this weird place that your body really can't sort of recalibrate back to, to its center, right? To yeah. its balance. So when women get it, they worry. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, metronidazole is one of the treatments. And one of the things I find when I go to work is people will say, oh, we have an antibiotic to treat that. And I'm like, A, it's not an antibiotic. It's actually not an antibiotic. It's an antifungal. Um, which people want to know because mm-hmm. it's actually in that way helpful to your microbiome than harmful. Um, And so it can treat and like reduce the amount of lactobacillus that you've sent out. And hopefully that will get your pH level back into where it needs to be. Um, What it does not do is help repopulate the other other vaginal, like good contenders that need to come to the table and like repopulate. So that's why when, you know, in pregnancy, they say you'll treat it, but it tends to come back. Right. Yes. So, right? Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes yeah. it feeds off protein, right? So when uh, you have intercourse, mm-hmm. the sperm mm-hmm. like gets crazy and grows and, and you might have a stronger odor right after intercourse. Mm-hmm. Or when you have a period, mm-hmm. uh, it can feed off the proteins and the, mm-hmm. the men's oh, crazy. Diet. So those yes. two might yes. be clues that you might have the stronger odor mm-hmm. during those times. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Super mm-hmm. interesting. So it's not really an STI, but it definitely is an offender. Yeah. And I would say um, kind of traumatizing yeah. for women if they have yeah. it, you know. So, But yeah. very treatable. But very treatable. Yeah. Yeah. The water, eight ounces of water, yeah. half teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. Organic if you can find it. To spray it up there yes. every night. Yeah. yeah. If you're having the fishy odor, you could do it for seven nights straight, yeah. you know, at night in the shower. And then you could yeah. just do it when it's like, you know weekly or maintenance of some kind if you decided you wanted to do that and isn't it um something that happens a lot with same-sex couples it can yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and the reason might be well sometimes you have um you know lubricant uses and again lubricants are a high offender so again yeah looking at what you're using and if it's 
you know this after it, mm -hmm. lubricants tend to break down and to um they they hinder the microbiome from doing what it needs to so they can actually over time keeping your ph level really high you can actually wipe out species that you need mm -hmm. yeah wow. so yeah, so and coconut sex oil. Toys. So sex coconut toys oil as well. Coconut oil. Coconut you can put it in your mouth. Oh, you yeah. can also put it in your vagina. Yeah, yeah. Your okay. vagina loves it. It's Great. wonderful. So and it's Sally wants to talk about toys. Like a lubricant. <laughs> we we which is I said, and Sally wants to talk about toys. Sex toys. Yeah, sex toys. <laughs> yes. Yes. Make sure they're clean. <laughs> Make sure they're washed, you know. And, and that the soap is washed well off them. Right? Yes. That yes. the soap is off. And then no back door to front door. Yeah. No back door to front door. Right. You know what that yeah. Of course. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But perhaps you should explain. Oh, back door to front door. Okay. Uh back door is your rectal area. And, uh, you know, your vaginal opening is your front door. So nothing from the back entry, uh, like, you know, you wouldn't let someone enter the back door of your house, right? You might think they'd be a stranger or a burglar. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be very offensive, very intru intrusive and invasive and just as well. Um, any back door activity into the front door, you're now introducing all the rectal bacteria that doesn't belong in the vaginal area has now had a great introduction and a pathway in to... You know, can definitely English. throw it off. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, that can be one of the yeah. things. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. I know and, I um, wonder about a lot of sex toys, like what they're made out of, like the polymers yeah. and if they break down. Yeah. Um, because all those things can break down. Yeah. And if they, um, I mean, those in itself, we're, we're getting on like a whole nother topic of like reproductive or endocrine disruptors, but things that are, you know, plastic or polymer or anything or silicone, a lot of that stuff, I mean, it's why we don't drink out of plastic water bottles anymore, right? That's why people are saying we shouldn't, we shouldn't be drinking out of that. Mm. Anything that's warm will leach whatever um, is going to come out of that product, right? right? So a sex toy that's been like yeah. heated to body temp. Yeah, and probably they think they're doing a great job by putting you know, yeah. really hot water to clean it. Yes, right. And you might want to use cold water to clean. Yeah. Yeah. That's so yeah. Time. Um no old sex toys. Yeah. Um, the 60s. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You change those out <laughs> no every year. Sex. Treat yourself. Buy a new one. <laughs> They're updated too. So like get a new one. Yeah. <laughs> Fancy. <laughs> Don't stick with the old stuff, you know. <laughs> the 2.0. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's true. Right. Get rid of the old ones. Buy some new ones. Um yeah. So that's interesting. Yeah. So so then um what about um trichomonas? Yeah. You know that um, I'm, I'm not familiar with at all. Yeah, and it's very common. It is very common. Um you know it's funny, I would say that I see less of that. Yeah. Um I would say that when I was working in a women's health clinic on the military base, that was oh, incredibly really? prevalent. Yeah. Because there's a lot of, you know, maybe maybe just the affinity again of like cross partnering or something that's happening there. But um, mm -hmm. that I found that usually it's, um, I would, it's really interesting that I would say that I found it like sort of in its little mini outbreaks, right? Yeah. Like for some reason I see like three or four people come in and they have it and then I wouldn't yeah. see it for a long time. So it's kind Very of interesting. interesting. Yeah. yeah. What so, does it look like? What are the symptoms for that? Oh. Um, you know, that one, they say they call it the strawberry cervix. So when we go in, if we touch the cervix with a swab, it will actually sort of have like blood spot patterns that break open that look like the seeds on a strawberry. If it's been there for a while. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Um, yeah. But usually I find when I go do to the back, I'll do, uh, you know, the, the, it, there will be an odor as well. Yeah. It might even be fishy. Uh, it's literally the same exact treatment as what you would treat bacterial vaginosis with, which is metronidazole. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's for people in Europe, it might so, still be flagell. Well, or well, this is the other thing. You know, a lot of times when we're testing, sometimes we're only testing the basics, right? We're testing for yeast and bacterial vaginosis. Mm -hmm. So here's an interesting thing: if we're not testing for trick, the same treatment is for trichomonas that is for bacterial vaginosis. So if they come up for BV, which they will. Because again, BV is a pH imbalance. So if you have trichomonas, it likes to live in the pH imbalance of like 
on the higher levels, right? Okay. So if you if you sort of look up front and you go, oh, look, she's got BB, right? Or you go to do your microscope mm -hmm. work, um, you actually might already be treating trick and not knowing it, which is mm -hmm. kind of an interesting thing. Because sometimes we're not always testing for yeah. it. Yeah, super right? interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would say genital warts is, you know, yeah. very, um, yeah. has been a high, high contender yeah. that I think is, um, that people come in for as well. So tell us about genital warts. Yeah. What would you do if you saw external mm -hmm. genital warts? Yeah. I mean, so I would say that then I knew they didn't most likely get their HPV vaccine or Gardasil vaccine. Um, you know, again, a lot of, if we think a decade or two back, this wasn't a vaccine that was required. It was an optional opt-in vaccine and with pediatricians. And a lot of the thought around it was if I give it to my child who's, you know, nine years old, it, you know, there was a thought of, are they going to be sexually active sooner than I'd like? And mm. and I don't know if there's really a connection with that, but I think that yeah, was some of the mindset of parents. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of that, um, what we're seeing now, which is interesting because in Australia and New Zealand, they, they made it a requirement. So they hardly have any genital warts and they hardly have any cervical cancer. It's really unbelievable. Um, they're off the charts. They're like really doing incredibly well. Whereas you look at us over here and we're still kind of in that area where we're a generation or two behind for people who were able to really sort of um, to get like a mass of the of the vaccine so half my job would be extinct yeah. if people got that had gotten their vaccine i wouldn't be dealing with like cervical cancer abnormal pap tests that would lead to like a colposcopy or biopsy wow. or yeah. you know or genital yeah. warts mm -hmm. um are they harmful no they're not harmful they're not in the cancerous you know um category which people are very concerned with visually they're you know i would say psychologically you know traumatizing yeah, for people to right. kind of hit that. Yeah. So you, it's tr really treatable. I mean, we can, you can either go to your dermatologist or, re, you know, some other clinics that do reproductive care um, and health. And you can either get like a, the freezing done, which is like the cryo, you know, when people got the, like warts on the hands, they yeah. go get it frozen off, you yeah. know, so you could get that done or you could get like an acid treatment or there is a topical, you can send a cream out to a pharmacy and it, it works like over a long period of time. So but lots of options. And HPV, here's, here's, here's yeah, the sorry. thing though. No, it's okay. Yeah. Just you kind of, I remembered it. Mm -hmm. When people come in, what's really intriguing is that people will go, oh, it, that's just a mole I have. Oh. Like yeah. that's not a mole. Uh -huh. So interestingly enough, it's not like warts would look on your hand where people look and it's kind of like a, you know, a little bit clear, but thick and maybe has like an indentation or a hole or a dimple. Right. It actually looks nothing like that. Yeah. Um, it will kind of have a an overall look that maybe a skin like flesh tone color or maybe a shade or two darker. So people will often mistake it as a skin tag. Like mm -hmm. I'll hear when you come in and they'll be like, oh, I think that's a skin tag. You know, I've had it for a while. Um, or, you know, male will come in and be like, ah, yeah, those are just, you know, moles or freckles. They just, yeah, I've had them forever. When essentially it's actually um, genital warts. And so that's really interesting for people to know. Great, yeah. yeah. Um, now, can those genital warts, I know that I get this question, uh, can those external genital warts cause cancer of the cervix if they mm -hmm. infect the cervix? No, because the HPV, uh, there's over, F by the way, there's over a hundred, yeah. there's over a hundred strains of HPV out there. Um, yeah. And we actually can cross it skin to skin. It's not just sexual activity. So yeah. that's that's been some of the mm. interesting thing. But we only really care about, there's a group of like 20 to 25 that we care about. Um, and two of them, the most common general wart strains are 16 and 11. And those don't cause cancer. Mm -hmm. So that's really important to know that. Like if people get that, okay. they shouldn't be worried about that. Ever. So, yeah. Okay. So that's good. <laughs> and then what about the ones that do cause cancer? You mentioned yeah. colposcopy. What is yeah. a colposcopy? <laughs> well, it's not a colonoscopy, that's for sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, it's really a fancy term. Your pap test screening is really important, but what it is is actually only a screening. I think one of the things people think when they come in, I thought this for a long time, was that it's actually a diagnostic test. And, and the reason I like to say it's a screening and not a diagnostic test is because here's how I explain it. If you came into me and you said, 
I think I've had a heart attack and I just take a stethoscope and I listen to your heart for the next 10 minutes. I will not be able to diagnose whether or not you got a heart attack, right? The only way I can actually diagnose it is with the EKG, right? So you coming in and saying, I think I had a heart attack and I take out my stethoscope is the equivalent of you coming in with your cervix and I get my pap tools out and do a pap smear. It's not a diagnostic test. It's really a screening test. And the reason we do it is be probably because it's actually inexpensive, mostly. Yeah. You can get quick results. Mm -hmm. And so there's two types of test to a pap test. There's each, when you're old enough, you get the HPV test attached to it. And then just to tell if there's a presence of a high risk strain, you know, a cancer causing strain that we're worried about, or it basically just on a scale of zero to 10 tells you how irregular, irregularly shaped the cells are. That's all that it's going to tell you. So it's either going to say, Hey, they're mild changes or they're um, more moderate changes. They're high grade changes or wow, we looked at this and we don't know what this is. And you're going to get that is when you're, you know, kind of, yeah. determinations, I would say, right? right? The only way to really diagnose what's going on is to actually do a colposcopy. And so when people get really nervous, they have an abnormal path and all of a sudden alert, 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 they think they have, they have cancer. I would say to make everyone feel mm -hmm. reassured, it takes over a decade to actually get cervical cancer. Once you've been in contact with a high risk strain, and if you've never get, you know, pap tests right on time, mm -hmm. because then that gives a chance and you only one in four people would ever develop cervical cancer. Yeah. The other three may never that HPV may be a virus that just mm -hmm. clears out in a couple of years from your cervix and kind of, kind of lays low and doesn't do anything. Yeah. So colposcopy is a fancy term for the colposcope is a big microscope. So I basically look at your cervix when you come in and instead of you, when you go out at night, you look at the moon and you're like, Oh yeah, I see the moon's there. It's nice. You know, I can tell maybe, you know, maybe a little bit of gray and white it looks pretty, right? But you can't tell me where the lakes and the craters and the mountains are, right? When I get a telescope out and you look at the moon through the telescope, you're like, oh my gosh, what is happening? There's like a whole, everything, you know? Right. And so that's exactly what the colposcope does. When you come mm -hmm. in, I can all of a sudden look at the cervix and be like, oh my goodness, there's a whole world of stuff happening on your cervix and I can see it. And then I have to make a very good, like educated guess on the changes that I see as to where to take my biopsy sites. And those are the very specific. And then when we send it out, the pathologist will then go ahead and really do what they need to do, whether it's stains of some sort, and they'll look and come back and say, this is either low grade, they're negative, or they're high grade, or we're worried about this or that. That's your diagnosis. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Great. I love that. Thank you um, for sharing that. So, yeah. some, sure. Sometimes a, a woman will get upset when we have to tell her that her, her pap came back positive for HPV. It's true. <laughs> and uh, she sounds like she's going to go strangle her lover. <laughs> <laughs> what should we tell them? It's Jackie? true. Or they just stop listening to anything you say. Right. right, right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we yeah. used to get a lot of phone yeah. calls. Yeah. Now that we make like medical information available, mm -hmm. the one of the things I really dislike so much, I cannot wait until the day we change this, but a lot of people can get their raw medical data. Like you go online to your online chart and you get yeah. your pap test and you're reading it and all of a sudden you're yeah. like freaking out because yeah. you read your pap, you don't even understand the diagnosis. And then all but of a sudden it says like positive. High, yeah, it says high risk HPV. And you're like, <laughs> oh my gosh. And so people don't even read anymore yeah. and they call us in and we're like, no, that's just the name die. of the yeah. test. You yeah. actually don't have it, yeah. but uh, they don't know that's how they're reading it. Or... Uh, they do have HPV, it says detected, yeah. and then people just, that's it. It is like, we're not listening anymore. It's like, Aww. when am I going to get cancer diagnosis, right? right? Yes. And even when they come in for the colposcopy, the actual biopsy stage, they're still thinking that, mm -hmm. you know, I can see it on their face. They're just really kind of worried. And, you know, I have to kind of tell them, mm -hmm. this is not a cancer diagnosis. You actually do not have cancer. This is the cells that... In 10 years, one in four people may develop cancer and the other three people won't if we never see you ever again. So really, the goal here is to see what these cells are, see if they're going to make any changes from the HPV virus. Yes. And if they do, then we need to get rid of them. Right. And if they don't, sometimes they just go away. Yeah. Your body can heal itself.
So, um, yeah. So I tell people HPV is, you know, we're talking about it like it's, you know, kind of the thing now, right? Yeah. But um, it, I would tell people it's so rare yeah. for us to see yeah. cervical cancer yeah. Yeah. or vaginal yeah. cancer. It really is getting more rare. So that's a good thing. Um, but yeah. How would somebody encourage uh, the virus to clear from the body? Is there anything they could do? Yes. Keep your pH balance between 3.8 <laughs> and 4.2. Um, <laughs> um, stop smoking. Tell your cervix oh, to stop wow. smoking and yeah. vaping. Right. You know, I know your cervix likes to have yeah. a night out, but don't yeah. vape. Yeah. You know, likes to. You know. Yeah. Um, no vaping, no nicotine products. Um, it really, anything that's inflammatory to the body really kind of will um, put your cervix in that. You including know, stress, stress will do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know all the fun things in life: alcohol. Yeah. You know, yeah. co coffee. No, I don't know. I heard about that. I hope not. But, coffee. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that um, one of the things that would be best to do, we're going to start talking about. There's barely new research starting. It hasn't really come down yet. But like I said, the microbiome, right? We're already talking about the gut. It's yeah. so important. Um, we're going to start talking about vaginal biome health because mm -hmm. really we're wiping out species at a high rate, which is why pH levels are always off. One of the reasons why they could be off. And so we're going to be start talking in the next yeah. couple of years about vaginal suppositories yeah. for three months to help repopulate your microbiome. Yeah. So that you can stop actually living in one poor pH yeah. level yeah. that would be yeah. prone um, to BV. But here's the thing. If you, if you're living outside of your pH, um, that's what can allow HPV to progress down the road to, to, high, to cervical cancer. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're talking about HPV and rectal cancer. Same thing. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So I came across a lady in, uh, last year and she told me about a, a suppository she was putting in her vagina oh, called yeah. New Eve, N U E V E. Uh, and it was. Uh, it was probiotic. Yes. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Do you know There's, what was in it? I don't. Okay. She was just told she me about, just it, told but about it. Uh, yeah. 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 We so, haven't yeah. Been so given them to people yet. Yeah, that's interesting. I know a lot of people have been coming out over the years with different like vaginal suppositories. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I think they're helpful mm -hmm. if they have the, you know, if again, are you sending one soldier to war? Like when people drink. Um, what is it? Oh my gosh, I'm blanking. The drink. Ready? Let's play. Yeah. Let's play a game. The drink where everyone's drinking nowadays. It's really popular. You go to Whole Boba, Foods and you Boba. buy it. Is it Boba oh, Boba um, yeah. right. It's the probiotic drink. Yeah. Are you talking about? Um, yeah. I I know what you're talking about. It's kind of yeah. like fizzy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we can drink that. Yeah. Um, it's like the probiotics are kind of doing the same from down below, but yeah. they're doing it at a. Again, you. It, it's hard to know if they'll actually yeah. stay and populate because in their ecosystem, they may not have like the prey predator ecosystem, uh, what they can eat and yeah. live in, right? Should they be so, putting their kombucha in their vagina? Oh, good question. Well, it is busy. <laughs> yeah. No. It's like vinegar. Yeah. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe they shouldn't put it in their vagina. There's probably definitely sugar there. in there. And the oh, yeast yeah. would be like, oh, oh my gosh, sugar. that's right. There's too much oh, sugar that's not in your put... vagina. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but back to what you were saying, I think they're not a bad idea. I think anything can help, yeah. right? Um, I just tell people don't go overboard. Like, you know, don't be putting mm -hmm. like, yeah. you know, suppository in there like twice a day, every right. day. But yeah. I think they can help. It just depends what's in the, you know, it's got to be a variety, right? Of different lactobacilluses, yeah. right? And then probably work wanna... with a provider on, on it and not just do it all on your own. Which I'm sorry, I missed. Oh, I said, mm -hmm. if, if you were to do any of that, to work with your provider. Yes, right, it, exactly. Yeah. Go see your provider. Have them read the labels. Yeah. Yes. Right. <laughs> Have Get them their read. opinion first. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you're pregnant, make sure it's yeah. safe. And yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. So, yeah. So, that'll be so that's interesting. very interesting. Yeah. So, what about the big STDs? The, the, big the ones that we have to test uh, Blood to find mm -hmm. them, like syphilis. Yeah. So syphilis, yeah. yeah. Syphilis is definitely. So we don't always have to test the blood for that one, right? We can diagnose syphilis from a sore.
Very you can. First you can. If that often goes unnoticed, though. Mm -hmm. Usually, yeah. people miss that the sore because there might only be one, and they think, okay, this maybe it goes away fast, yeah. and then you sort of that's it. It's gone. You blink, yeah. you miss it, right? Yeah. Um. So I would say that most people. Um, have either know they've had exposure from a partner, yeah. but there is a, there is the cases where they don't know, and um, there's really no symptoms. I yeah. mean, you know, right. we might say that you know twenty to forty percent might get flu-like symptoms, and then that goes away, and then there's only like twenty to sixty percent of mm -hmm. people who may get like a, overall like it's like kind of a very faint pink body rash, not enough where people would actually look at it. I think. Mm. Right. When when people read syphilis online, they're they're like they're always saying, "Oh, look for the spots on the hands and the feet," and that's really with later yeah. syphilis. That's not right. with initial. Yeah. And gotcha. so some people might miss those first symptoms because they think they have the flu. Yeah. Mm. It goes away, right? You get like the fever, the body aches, a little bit of the rash, mm. and then it goes away. And then you think, "Oh, I just must have had like the yeah. flu," you know. Right. Um. So in California, apparently, in the last few years. I think it's been creeping up about 80% more so than yeah. in the past years. Um, and so again, it's just one of those, it's like those hidden culprits mm -hmm. you wouldn't know, um, but it can get past sexually. So, right. yeah. Yeah. so yeah. it's very dangerous in pregnancy. It oh, is. Wow. So yeah. dangerous. So awful. The baby know. can develop congenital syphilis. Yes. And uh, Death, it can't still born yeah, be treated. Oh, sometimes. that's really sad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is why we test everyone at the beginning yeah. of pregnancy. Yeah. Um, but I always tell people get tested before you're pregnant. You know, mm -hmm. get all your baseline testing. Yeah. It's a really good thing to have, and then that way you can get treated. I mean, syphilis, can you can get treated if it's under a year exposure. You can get one shot. If you don't know when you've had exposure, or you think it's over a year, then it would be a course of three shots a week apart. Um, so, yeah. Shots of penicillin. Penicillin. Yes. Lovely. Yes. Good old penicillin. <laughs> yeah, the stuff you find in your cheese and your bread. <laughs> like green, blue stuff. It's pretty. Yeah, it's yeah. great stuff. <laughs> we wanted to talk a little bit about hepatitis. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Um, and sometimes good. people think of hepatitis as like uh, something they catch just from food. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. you can catch mm. it in other ways. Yes, course. blood, body, uh, fluid. body fluids. Um, obviously, if somebody goes to the bathroom and they don't mm -hmm. wash their hands after, so the rectal transfer to like a doorknob, yeah. right? And that can be yeah. hepatitis A. Yeah. So that's why when people work in food environments, they're always asking about hepatitis A. And mm -hmm. then obviously, you know, if you were to cut your hands, they don't want it that, you know, hepatitis B can get transmitted through blood. Yeah. But there's also the other population of like blood transfusion um, or yeah. IV drug use right. or needles or, you know, tattoos. Yeah. Right. So really good to get, you know, yeah. all your blood testing done right. for that. Um, but yeah. Maybe. We don't see it too much. Don't Sometimes we see hepatitis um, is making come immigrants back, coming from oh, yeah. different yeah. Middle Eastern right. countries yes. and yeah. Asian countries. Yeah. Sometimes We're having hepatitis C sort of pop up again. Yeah. 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 So there's some, um, I think there's oral medications for hepatitis B. Yeah. And then I think they're coming out, if, if they're not, is all, they're, I'm pretty sure already there's a hepatitis C yeah. treatment. Right. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. I know, it's good that we can treat most things, mm -hmm. really. Great. It's just good to get yeah. tested more often than not. I think. Right. So you don't miss anything. So what about STDs in the different populations that mm -hmm. we see? So, um so some of these STDs you see more often in the younger people, like the chlamydia and gonorrhea. Um, so say a middle-aged or a, mm -hmm. an elderly lady, mm -hmm. have you come across patients that might have a, a certain Patient. type of STD? Yeah. Yeah. I guess. I mean, I think that... I mean, our patients tend to self-select themselves to our clinic. Mm -hmm. So I don't know yeah. that they see a higher population right. of like the old, the older population, right? Yeah. Um, and a lot of the times, I would say some of those populations are not even generally yeah. coming in for their pap test. Okay. So yeah. more of what I see with right. that, and again, this is like decades before there was vaccines and stuff. Yeah. So with them, I'm seeing more like uterine cancer, endometrial cancer, yeah. cervical cancer still. Right. Um, yeah. So at that point, you know, again, if they're sexually active or not, you know, I, you would see chlamydia with them just as I would with the young yeah. person, right? But they're not coming in as often, I think, to get yeah. tested. Or, right. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. 
What's this molluscum? People are yes. that word is still floating. It in is. Some I've of heard that. Yeah. 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 Everyone's like, "What is that?" Yeah. Um, it's a kind of a cute little one. It is. It, yeah, it's kind cute. of cute. Yeah. To I don't think people think wine. it's cute, but. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It reminds, it reminds me of like if I could see coral, it would be like a feature on coral mm -hmm. under the ocean. Don't you think? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. No, not lovely. But not it's... really lovely. So here's what I tell people. Because um, when they come in, they've obviously done their search the whole internet for hours and days. <laughs> yeah. When they come in, they're pretty sure they've got something pretty terrible because they couldn't find it anywhere on the internet. So yeah. when they come in, <laughs> yeah. most of the time they're already thinking they have something pretty terrible. Um, I usually tell people if you were lucky enough, um, it's actually in the smallpox family. So if you were, and it's a skin pox is really what it is. And it's why it looks different too. So I tell people if you were lucky enough to get it when you were a kid, that's when most people did get it, actually. Yeah. Um, the way that it gets transferred is like gym class or like sweat, mm. you know, sweat between kids. Yeah. And they can get it on their arm. They can get it on their legs. They can get it like, you know, on their face or wherever. It really would just likes to be on the skin. The reason we're seeing it as, you know, sexually active adults in this population is, you know, it likes to live on the skin, but likes a, you know, mm. a fluid passage, right? So if it's not sex, it's a fluid passage then usually, you know, gyms yeah. are really a high place where people, oh, you know, okay, they'll, yeah. they'll sweat on the treadmill and maybe they, don't, they forget to clean it and they walk away and then mm -hmm. someone else comes on and then they grab on yeah. and then they're like, okay, I'm sweating. So they now sweat to sweat transfer. Yeah. They go to the bathroom, but we wash our hands after, not before. So then they've touched and they've already like cross planted mm. it. Themselves, okay. right auto planted you know, right. on themselves yeah. and then um usually then it will get transferred and this is why some people get it and some people don't like they'll be with a partner and they're like my partner doesn't have it and i'm like a they already either got exposed when they were little because yeah. it's a one-time life exposure right. so when you get it it i call it it looks like very um it looks like an acne vesicle that's yeah. been there for a long time oh, yeah. they're kind yeah. of a little like raised oh, that's a really good way they to get, describe yeah that. there's like yeah. a little white ball in it sometimes if they've been there a while and yeah. they have a little dimple in the center of them and when they break open they bleed like crazy and so some people think oh is this acne because they only saw one bump right mm. um one of the ways it spreads quite once somebody has it is they'll shave yeah their genital area because oh, yes. it's really right that's the yeah. end thing now keep it clean and so what happens is they shave and it goes everywhere. Yeah. And all, that's when I see them. Oh. And then they're like, oh no, I have like 50 of these now. Yeah. And I was like, actually, you probably had one before. And then you shaved and then it just, that was it. Everywhere yeah. there was a break in the skin, it just found hold. Mm -hmm. And Damn. now it's like a little breakout. That's crazy. Each breakout lasts about, I would say like two to three months in the cycle. They'll go away. They'll get maybe, you know, a few more outbreaks. And then usually about, I would say, six months to a year in, you'll never see them again. Wow. Your immune system will just lead you into it, carries the virus, but you'll never see them again, and yeah. they're not contagious. So there's that. no treatment? No, no, no. Interesting. Does it yeah, leave, like, a scar or anything, or...? People get treatments that will, the scar, the treatments leave scars. And so people will go in freaking yeah. out because they don't want that there, right? Yeah. They're sexually active partner but they want to be and they don't want them there so they'll say please get them do anything and there's some treatments out there like there's some you know dermatologists or clinics that might do the freezing or they might do the acid treatment mm -hmm. those both um the freezing may scar a teeny bit less dependent on the treatment course but the t the acid will scar and so t i tell people you know yeah. this is only going to last you six months to a year but scarring might last years if not forever and that's really kind of something to think about. And it's, so I tell them really the best way to go is just kind of like, um, you know, watch this kind of do its thing. And mm -hmm. then, you know, I always tell people like, you know, some, some of the college age people don't do laundry every day. So I tell them, you know, really be mindful of your towels and one-time use. Don't use it for the week and don't like, you know, use your oh, washcloths yeah. in the shower or loofahs yeah. because you will, you know, eventually mm. spread it to others. So interesting. Yeah. Or if, yeah. you know, like, you know, high population people mm -hmm. who share bathrooms yeah. and share each other's whatever, I don't know, razors yeah. or, oops, I don't know, my lupa. <laughs> I mean, that's not a good way to go. So no. don't share things in the shower. Do that's you not yours. <laughs> no, I don't. Do you? No. Okay. <laughs> no sharing possible there. <laughs> we should get ourselves some lupa. Oh, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. <laughs>
<laughs> um, and then let me think. What so, is, so to it? prevent S STIs, yeah. I've oh, got yeah, to stop to calling them STDs. Yeah. So we don't yeah. like calling them sexually transmitted diseases. diseases. It's yeah. infection. I think as the word disease it's says, better. like it's never going yeah. away. Yeah. Mm. Really, it can't. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's that was a little bit too stigmatizing yeah. for people to to be like, I have a disease. Yeah. It's, it's an infection, and, yeah. you know, until otherwise. Yeah. Um, the best way to prevent stuff? Yeah. I mean, really, abstinence? Uh, that's please. terrible. <laughs> so if you're going to, you know, I mean, yeah. you, you know. So uh, condoms, would, a barrier, right? So there's external condoms, which we see all over the place. We know them as male condoms. Mm -hmm. um, there's internal condoms. So women can also get internal condoms. You don't yeah. want to use two condoms together. Um, you know, one mm -hmm. with the other. You don't want to pair them up, you know, one or the other. Right. Um, that would yeah. be the best way, yeah. you know, or if there's any oral activity. I mean, there's there's like oral barriers that you can buy as well. So those mm -hmm. would really be the best. Um, obviously, if someone's having any kind of lesion or bump anywhere, I mean, obviously, no contact, right, until, until you figure out what it is and it goes away right. or it can be treated. So yeah. really, that's... And then if you're in a new relationship before you actually have the intercourse, mm -hmm. might be a good idea to... Get and tested. Get tested. Yes, it if is. Had uh, previous sexual yeah. partners, and it is. Yeah, it is. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and I always tell it. We would save a lot in my line of work too. Mm -hmm. People had gotten baseline tests. Yeah. Um. A, sometimes people will come in and say, "Oh, I'm monogamous, so I don't need my test." And I'm like, "That's cool, but like, do you know if your partner is like? I don't yeah. actually want to like." think right. that, that there are yeah. people who are not that yeah. you know I've seen some really intriguing scenarios where like for instance I had a male come in um in his 20s mm -hmm. and uh, we do rapid HIV test in the clinic and it came up positive yeah and I thought well it just doesn't match up with the sexual history partner is female you know long-term relationship you know, this doesn't really line up. So I'm thinking until proven otherwise, this will be a false positive. Yeah. Uh, the confirmatory test came back positive. And when he came back in, yeah. we now had to have a, a discussion of what was really going on. And the discussion was at that point, you know, having sexual relations with males. And I, I'm not sure that the female partner knew about that. Mm -hmm. And so now having a discussion with the partner of like um, that you, would have been exposed to HIV virus. Really um, yeah. yeah, so that is, you know, one of those things where I really, as much as where I've worked, I really try to tell people it's really just good to get a baseline of negative. If, even if it's a test and you know it's negative, it might be good to just get it. Yeah. It can save a lot of um, conversations or yeah. that might be really hard yeah. if you find out someone's positive and then there's a, there's a like, well, who brought right. it? Who brought it to who? Wait, who gave That's it so to you? True. Oh, yeah. So, so, yeah. so I feel like yeah. after working where I worked, just for me, yeah. I'm like, get a baseline test. Yeah. Just, you know, for, yeah. for, to make, you know. Often I'm doing a pap on on a lady and I say, would you like me to do an STD check on yes. this? And she's like, oh, no, I've been married for 30 years. Yeah. And then a little <laughs> pause and she's like, he better not be doing anything. Yeah, right. I know. Yeah, I the know. only way. Would yeah. And that's how I found, not that I am a therapist at all, or but literally that has yeah. been some a lot of my visits where yeah. a test has been positive and now yeah. we have to have a discussion yeah. and that's yeah. the first, like i have to have like a discussion yeah. now with my partner and i don't even know what the state of our relationship is anymore so and, and that's the news that i'm breaking in the clinic right, right? like when i'm giving yeah. him a diagnosis i'm like oh, this, you hard. know so yeah so it's Very one sad. of those yeah it's like a grieving yeah yeah. So there is, I understand why people don't get tested. Mm. There's also, you know, that. Like too. fear of what if. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. yeah. But um, I have a question for you. Yeah. I would love to know, you know, what is your bleeding truth? <laughs> <laughs> well, I said it earlier. If it doesn't belong in, if you wouldn't put it in your mouth, it doesn't belong in your mouth. <laughs> I mean, that really can get you really far in this. Yeah. Um, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, I think it's a good thing um, to really listen to your body. Um, I'm really yeah. always really happy when patients listen to their body. Mm -hmm. I may not, we may not have the answers together, but it's a good thing to really um, get in tune 
with things that are going on and it can relate to so many other areas. So if I could just, that would be something that would be so big that I would tell everybody is um, if you get something somewhere, you know, like a, you have a symptom, you have a pain, you have an ache, you have something, your body's trying to tell you something and it may be your body, it could be your emotions, it could be your life. There's a lot of things connected to it outside of the medical world. And so um, I just think, you know, listen to your body. It's trying to tell you something. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, you. Seriously, so informative. I feel like I've learned like way more in this last hour than I wanted to learn. Learn. Really? So <laughs> much about the vagina. See why we follow, follow her around, around taking notes. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Well, thank you for having me, both of you. I loved it. Um, you know, again, it's sometimes if you know there's too much information, we can always chat another time about yeah. some other things. But yeah. sure. Yeah, there's so much out there. Like I said, I I'm surprised at the real estate that the vagina holds on the body, which yeah. is so small, but how in depth it really oh, yeah. is. You know, yeah. it's just it's yeah. so expansive at what can yeah. happen in there. So. Yeah. But when it's a happy vagina, isn't oh, it? it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so girls, keep your vaginas happy. Yeah. Safe yeah. and happy. Keep and get tested. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> so anybody that's still listening, please uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for, for staying with us. And Jackie, we really appreciate your time to enlighten You're us so on all of this. It's been <laughs> super great. Yeah. Thank I'm you. Excited. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. So thanks again for listening. We really appreciate it. And um, if you like what we're doing, give us a bit of a review on Apple. That would help us so much. And um, if you come across a subscribe button, press the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything.